Greetings. Thanks for tuning in. This is Adam Rafferty. And in this series of lessons, I'm going to show you how I play my arrangement of The Girl from Ipanema. This is a tune by Antonio Carlos Jobim. And there's a classic version that I suggest you listen to. It's on an album called Getz, as in Stan Getz, the saxophone player, Getz Gilberto. And uh, it's sort of the go-to version of The Girl from Ipanema. So definitely check that out. I'm just going to give you some important things here in the intro. And I'm going to be turning over here to my laptop screen to read all the points that I want to give you. And then we're going to get started playing. Okay. On that recording, the, the recording that I referred to, the Stan Getz recording with... Joao Gilberto and Astrid Gilberto. They do it in the key of D-flat, which is really beautiful, but I do it in the key of F, and I do it with a capo on the first fret. So let me explain why. Um, there's sort of enough room for melody and bass, and I was already very familiar with it in the key of F because many of the older jazz real books or fake books have it in the key of F. I could have just as easily done it in the key of E because I'm doing this mainly to get open strings with the capo on the first fret. But the, the bridge has so many twists and turns and I sort of, I have the, the chord changes programmed uh, in my mind. So that enabled me to get up and running. Uh, and anytime I mess with it, Without a capo, my mind then gets caught between two versions. So, and then I end up playing something at the wrong fret. So, I'm going to show you how I do it with the capo on the first fret. If you want to then develop it in the key of E, that's up to you. Now, let me explain the tablatures that you're going to see on the screen every time you see the number one on a tablature, it's actually going to be one of these open strings that's capoed by the first fret. Now, if all you were doing was reading at the second and third fret, you know, you'd want to see three, two, one for a C chord, for example, if you're a tablature reader. But this gets really troublesome. Let's say you're playing something up on the seventh fret or on the tenth fret. Well, if you always have to do like a minus one or a plus one, it starts sounding like a Monty Python skit, if you know what I mean. So what I've done is I've left it, you put the capo on the first fret, the numbers you're gonna see in the tabs correspond exactly to the fret. So if you see a one, it's one of these. If you see a seven, it's the seventh fret. So that, that's how that's gonna work. Okay, another note. Um, you're going to have to play bar chords in this one. So if your guitar is difficult to play, please get a setup. Uh, if you are straining and stressing playing the bar chords, please take breaks. Please don't hurt yourself on this one by practicing endless hours. What I would prefer you to do on bar chords is to look for the right position, look for the right weight, and look for ways that maybe you can switch in and out of them so that you're not holding down a specific grip for a crazy amount of time. I'm gonna to try to show you some workarounds, but please take good care of your left hand. There are bar chords in this one, okay? All right, moving right along. This is the sort of orientation meeting. Um, the form of the song, uh, is A section, A section, B section, and then a final A section. So let me let me just give you a quick rundown. Hopefully you're familiar with the tune. This is an A section. That's going to be one A section. Then there's a second one. We're going to play it slower and don't worry. Now this is the B. 
lots of crazy chord changes. Don't worry, I'll show it to you. Ba boo doo boo 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 doo. Ba boo doo 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 doo. Shem bam bam ba 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 doo boo doo boo. Now we're gonna have another A section. Okay, so that's the form of the tune. So A A B A. That whole thing is gonna happen twice. And on the repeat, the second time it happens, we're going to have a little variation in the first two A sections. So it's just going to be twice through the tune, okay? Don't worry if you didn't get all that. There's going to be several videos here that are going to illustrate everything point by point, and there's going to be a recap video as well. So don't, just, just keep watching. Don't get hung up on that. Okay. I'm going to show you on the bridge, because of the bar chords, a couple different ways that I do it that might give you some left hand relief. And in preparing the lessons for you, I've come up with actually what I think might be better versions than what I have. So I'm just going to show you everything and let you decide what's most comfortable for you. Okay, so the first couple lessons are going to be harmony lessons. I call these the Harmony Roadmap. Excuse me, I'm reading off here. And I'm going to show you my technique concept on this and the baseline concept. So consider this lesson of Girl from Ipanema not only a lesson of where do I put my fingers, but it's going to be an arranging lesson a little bit. You're going to see how I put it on, and it's going to be a harmony lesson. And I urge you to embrace this information because, you know, for example, on my DVDs where I teach the Stevie Wonder songs, I just say, hey, put your fingers here. That's cool to a point. But for something with this many chord changes now, you're going to need to understand just a little bit of the inner workings of the harmony. And then it will actually make it much easier for you to finger things, for you to find alternate solutions, and for you to express your way of doing it, rather than just do the exact left hand fingering that I do. Of course you can if you want, but this will deepen your musicianship and your guitar arranging skills. So pardon me if I'm hiding behind this mic here. It's going to help improve the sound a little bit, I believe. For the lessons. So, alrighty, let's get started with lesson one. Uh, this is going to be a little bit about the harmony. All right. All right. Welcome to the harmony roadmap lesson for a girl from Ipanema. In this lesson, I'm going to show you just a couple of basics. I'm going to throw you right in. This will make everything easier, I think. Okay, so this is not a full-fledged harmony lesson, but just enough to get you over the hump for, for this arrangement. Okay, so let's just, real quick, uh, I'm capoed at the first fret. I'm going to play a major scale up the low string, and we're going we're gonna to just... Okay, so let's just give each of those a number now. One, okay, starting with one. And eight is F again, so I'm only gonna, eight is just a repeat of one, so watch what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now the notes are F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. So now imagine Roman numerals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can build a chord on any of those. So for example, uh, if I do a G minor chord, that's called A2 chord. Now I know I'm throwing you in and I'm skipping past a lot of stuff. An A minor, one, two, three, F, G, A, would be a three chord. Okay. If you've checked out the 14151 harmony and voice leading videos, you'll, you'll have an idea about this. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, there's, there are a, a four progressions that I would like you to 
just be qu quickly familiar with. And I'm not going to play these with any special voice leading. I'm just going to show you chords and show you the sound. So if we are in the key of F, there's a thing called a 2-5-1. That's one of the most important things in jazz and in bossa novas and pop tunes. So that would be a, some kind of a G minor chord to some kind of a C7 chord to an F chord, okay? Because it's the second note of the scale, the fifth note, the first note, so. Okay, two, five, one. That can have a lot of very, that can have a lot of different variations, but we're gonna have a, a lot of that in this piece. Okay, so next, uh, there's a nifty little thing. Hang on a sec here. And a lot of people get this wrong, so l let me just, I'll try to clarify. If we play a G7 chord, and we're in the key of F, we have a note in this chord that doesn't belong to the key of F. We have a B natural in this chord, okay? Because if we were to just over here, bum, 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 it's B flat is in the scale. And so we have this note that is foreign to the key. And so a chord like a G7 has a fancy name. It's called A secondary dominant, okay? And in this case, technically speaking, if you were to go to music school and had this on a test, just so you know, it's called a five of five. So it's like if C is the five chord in the key, it's sort of like we have this dominant seventh chord. This is called a dominant seventh chord. And it's pointing at that five chord. So this would be a two, five, one, two, five, one. This is a five of five then a five chord, then a one chord. Okay, so that's progression number two, or sort of twist number two that I want you to know. Next, just say this over and over to yourself, three, six, two, five, one. Three, six, two, five, one. Just, just burn that in your mind. Three, six, two, five, one. That's sort of, if you've checked out Fly Me to the Moon here on the website, uh, you know that that comes at the end. Um, let's say we're in the key of F. A three would be A minor. Six would be D minor. Two, five. So three, six, two, five, one. You can even just have three, six, two, five cycling. played a secondary dominant there. So three, six, two, five, and it could also be more in a pop context. Okay? That's, that's a whole chunk of chords that if you, if you don't know what key you're in, you see A minor, whoa, am I in the key of A minor? What, what, is, what, is that, what do these chords mean? Three, six, two, five, and it can cycle or it can go to one. So just sort of put that in your, in your, uh, on a back burner, because we're, we're going to be using that. And then the very last one, I promise this is it, because I know this is a lot of new information for you. There's a kind of a, a hip and cool one called one, four, three, six. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate this on, I'm going to play it for you right now on Girl from Ipanema. This is going to come in the shout chorus, and it's going to come on our last chorus. So the changes that we have without doing any arrangement yet, it's going to be some kind of F or F major 7. Beep. So watch this. If we go one, four, 
three, six. Bum, 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 bum. Watch this nice sound. It's... Oops. Now, I'm, sometimes I'm doing a dominant chord, so it's not exact. Bum, 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 boom, bum, 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 boom, bam. And then it puts us in the right spot. So watch. See, that's kind of a nice little bunch of changes in there. Uh, another place, let me... Um, See how that's going to work? And four and... Don't worry, I'm going to show you how to play it. Another tune that that happens quite often in is Pennies from Heaven. Okay? So, there you have it. Just to recap, I showed you 251. I showed you 3625 or 36251. And then I showed you what a 5 of 5 is. Oops, I told you that out of order, but I showed you what a 5 of 5 is. And then I just showed you this last little thing, this little gem called 1436. Okay, so these are building blocks. And we're going to be able to build the tune a little bit more easily now that we know this. All right, let's keep going. Okay, in this video, I'm going to teach you the harmony to the bridge. That way, you'll have a little idea of what's going on before we get started with the hairiness of a guitar arrangement. This is going to be very important, and it will help you stay mentally organized and be very clear. Okay, so there are... This is a confusing bridge for be beginners in the jazz realm because it's very harmonically adventurous, okay? So I'm going to break it down for you. There are three progressions, each with two chords. This is how we're going to think of it. You just have to remember three different little things, each with two chords, and then three, six, two, five, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you these three progressions. And in the lessons, I'm going to show you different ways of playing the melody with the harmony. Okay, so the first couple of changes, chord changes, the first progression is, we're going to call this G flat major seven or F sharp major seven, whatever you want to call it. Blah, 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 blah. Going to a B7. I know that doesn't look like a B7 because of the capo, but it is. So that's progression number one. How I watch you so sadly. That's progression number one. Okay. Progression number two, and there's only there's only three is F sharp minor seven, same chord. Ba, ba, da, 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 to D seven. Okay. Okay. Now, if, if there's a visual way you can, you can uh, help, that'll help you remember this, you just look, play your F sharp minor seven chord in the second and fourth fret, and look at where the D seven is. It's like three frets up and one string down. Just, just remember that leap, okay? Because now we're on progression number three. It's the same harmony, but a fret up. G minor seven, ba ba boom 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 boom. I did, it's the exact same thing, just to fret up. Now, we're going to do a variation on this E flat 7 chord because we have some open strings, but that's going to come later. So let's just 
strum these chord changes, these three progressions, one time together. Okay, so here we go. A one, a two, a three, and a four. Okay. Now, I promised you that all that's going to happen after this is three, six, two, five. It's a little, it's again, exactly not a six, but it's going to be a, a something, D something, G something, and then C something. Ba, 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 ba. That's like a, that's a, um, called a, let me show you what that is. I'm barring two fingers here, just two fingers. And I've got these sort of jazzy slash ugly notes. Technical name for that is flat nine sharp eleven. Don't worry about that. And then ball 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 ball. Boom 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 boom. Okay. Let's do one time together the whole bridge only playing chords. And if you don't play these fancy jazz chords exactly. That's fine for now. I just want you to get sort of going in your mind what the roots of the chords are, okay? So you know what the harmony is based on. Ready? Here we go. A one, a two, a ready, and G flat. Bum, 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 B7, bum, bum. F sharp minor. Bum, to D7, G minor, to E flat 7, now 3, 6, 2, 5, A minor, to D7, G minor, to C7. Okay, just a couple notes. I don't know why I think of G flat major seven, but then I think of F sharp minor seven. G flat and F sharp are the same note. In case you didn't know that, it's this note. So you can call that whatever you want it. And technically speaking, this D seven chord is a five of two. I'm just saying that just so you don't get confused. But don't worry if that's meaningless rubbish to you. It's just me being a music nerd. Okay, so now let's go to the next video, I'm going to show you how I've built the bass line around these changes. I'm going to show you a couple other techniques as well. And then in the following lesson, we're going to get started with the intro. So thank you for your patience. Thanks for being such a good student and watching this. All righty. All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you some techniques that you may be seeing me doing, that you might be wondering what I'm doing, and I'm also going to show you where the bass line stems from, just again to give you some background about how this arrangement is built and to maybe give you ideas about how to build your own arrangement. So please if you have not seen the lesson yet, there's a lesson here on Study with Adam called Boom Boom Bap. And you can find it in the Watch and Play library. If you've learned my arrangements before, you probably know about this. But I want to show you exactly how it pertains to this song, The Girl from Ipanema. OK, so the groove that we're going to base the whole arrangement on is boom boom bat 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 boom boom and the bass notes are going to fall on boom 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 and occasionally we're going to have a a back strike 
on, meaning striking a melody note with the back of our finger on where the word BAP is, because those always fall on two and four. But regarding the bass line, um, so let's say we're on an F chord. Remember, that's an F chord, because we've got the capo. Boom, boom. I'm alternating between the root and the fifth, okay? Now what I wanna stress to you is it doesn't need to, you know, dogmatically always be played like that. Once the music is in motion, you might only grab one of those. But it, we're setting up a flow in our music by th conceiving of the group as boom, boom, bat, boom, boom, bat, boom, boom, bat, boom, boom. So watch, maybe the music's going to get complicated, and I'm just going to play boom, 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 I'm only playing the first one, or I might land right on one, and three, so you know, that's just square one, boom, 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 okay? Next. If there's enough time or enough comfort, I try to go from the root to the fifth. So for example, in the bridge, which we covered in the last video, I'll just play a bass line to the bridge. So that, that gives us kind of a nice little bass line, or bass support, I should say. Okay? Now, from that, you know, the next thing that I, I need to show you, and I've probably shown you before, but here we go again. I tend, I'm tending lately, and this is just what's making sense for me. You don't have to do this, okay? I'm tending to give a lot of preference to the middle finger because I find it has the, the way I'm playing now with no fingernails and a steel string guitar, it has the feeling of the most assuredness when I play and Using it, it doesn't really affect my thumb. My thumb can be a little bit more independent. You know, when I try to use the index finger, I sort of get into this, uh, something muscularly happens where I lose the facility and the thump and the thumb that I like. So I have to be careful when I use my middle finger. Okay, so I can kind of just be very free with the middle finger, and it tends to work. And this brings up a good point, you know. There are these things that guitar teachers tell us to do. There are these standards that we sh should live by. And then comes the moment where, you know, playing for the people or playing with musicians who are not guitar players... And they tell you, we're not hearing the right thing. We, we, need, we need that note to pop right. And so that's when the thinking outside the box happens. Now, this makes some things harder and some things less comfortable, but I've, it's just that's kind of where I'm evolving. So if we were to then, you don't have to learn now how to play this, but I want to show you the shell. This is kind of an arranging lesson now of bump, bump, bump. Bum, 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 against that, I'm going. See how I'm kind of grabbing this in the bass? And whoops. note there but that's that's just to show you the, the two things being juggled back and forth let me let me do it again real slow and I'll see if I can get even more accuracy in the bass two three 
end. Okay, now that's not how we're going to play it in the arrangement, but that's how I'm conceiving of this. And then I'm going to just do more brushing. Instead of just only playing this, I'm going to play, grab some chord tones. Okay, so uh, that's sort of why I would, however you play, I want you to feel that you have rhythmic command of the bass and rhythmic command of the melody. So that's that's what I'm going for. Okay, thanks for watching this. Sorry if I'm digressing. I promise we're going to get into the tune. Uh, on, the, on the next video, video five, I'm going to show you the intro of Girl from Ipanema. All righty. All righty. Well, thank you for having the patience to watch the first set of preliminary videos. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I play a nice vamp, meaning a, a little chord pattern, at the beginning of Girl from Ipanema as an intro. Okay. So I'm going to show you real quick what probably 99.9 percent of guitarists would do if they said quick you need an intro from girl from Ipanema they usually do some kind of a thing called an F major 9 chord maybe go down to the F in the bass and then go up a fret to G flat so they would do something like something like this and, yeah, that's acceptable, but, you know, for a solo guitar arrangement, I like to try to always come up with something a little bit more special with a little bit of either inspiration or magic. So let me show you the voicings that I came up with and the pattern that I came up with. It's a little bit tricky, as is a lot of my stuff, but I think you can do it. So... Play this chord. Let's let's start with the chord. Uh, you can play F at the eighth fret, and then you're going to put your first and second finger in the seventh fret. So you're only going to be fretting three notes. And now play that with the open second string. Okay. That's an F six chord. And that's the sixth. Okay, and now just move the three fingers up. Now it gets a little scrunchy with the fingers, I know. Okay, but I'm going to show you a couple workarounds. So now what I want you to do is play those chords again and strum, strum everything. So we're going to have the sixth string, the first string, and the second string open. It's capoed. Okay. Uh, it's sounding a little bit more expansive and breathtaking than the closed, very closed sounding jazz voicings. Okay. So now. What we're going to do is we're going to have a bass line. Here's, here's what we're going to strive to do. And we're going to leave the ba-boom bap out until the end. So the first bass note's going to be this one. And then. And then open. So we're going root, fifth, root, fifth. But then we're going to. Do the same thing. But down to the open. Okay. 
So as you can see, it's starting to get a little bit, a little bit more interesting. Now, I have pretty big hands. This is very difficult for me to scrunch all of this in. So I'm going to show you what I do. I use the second, third, and fourth finger because the fingers just start to get a little skinnier. It's, it's a little easier to fit in the frets. And then for the bass note, I'm grabbing thumb over the top. Now, I understand that's going to be very tricky for some of you, so I'll, I'll show you what you can do. But here's how I do it. I go... Basically, anything that falls on two and four, I'm hitting with the backs of my fingers, and then I'm just kind of brushing up whatever, whatever feels right. And that, this is almost like improvising. This, this could change. Here's something else that you can do. Watch this. If you do it with three, two, one, when you put your third finger down to this one, slip your pinky in where your third finger was. So you have this. So you have that, if you can. And if none of that works, you can just do only three fingers. That'll work too, as long as you don't strum that open fifth string, okay? But those are the voicings that, that I use. So, Probably could you even get away with just playing the top three. Okay, so um, and I'm showing you these variations because I think it would be uncool and unreasonable of me to just show you how I do it and say, here, you have to do it like this because that's awkward stuff. And I have big hands, and some of you play nylon, and it might not be comfortable to use the thumb. Okay, so we're going to end the intro uh, with two, three, and four. It's going to come down here. Looks like it's a C7 chord. And then the reason you're going to do two, three, and four is as that's ringing, you're going to play an F sharp. Okay. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the whole intro for you nice and slow. And also, just, just to, to keep in mind, this typical intro where I, I should do it at the slower tempo, we're taking twice as long on the changes. This is one, two, three, four, one, two, we're going staying on this one a little longer, see? Okay, so now I'm going to play you the whole intro just so you can see it go by. I'm going to do it a little bit slowly, okay? Oh, one, two, ready, and... So that's how the intro is going to flow. Please modify this to your playing. Uh, make sure that what you're doing is comfortable and doesn't have to be this. This can just be the basis of some ideas maybe for a new way for you to do it. Okay, let's go on to the next lesson. Alrighty, so now we're finally at the A section of the tune. In this video, I'm going to show you the first four bars. And basically, that's going to be the melody that only fits on the first two changes. Bum, 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 bum. Tall and tan and young and lovely. A girl from Ipanema goes walking. And that's it. That's all that we're going to be doing in this video. So. Let me show you a couple of chord shapes that 
you might not have ever seen before that I never saw until I did this arrangement. First thing we're going to do, this is, this is a way to get, uh, this is for the F chord, bum, 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 you're going to do, and then you're going to bar here across four strings. Okay. Now, we're going to be brushing with the middle finger. Chances are we're not going to get as low as the D string. But I like to finger notes that just in case I bonk a string or just in case a string starts to ring out of my control, that it at least rings on a note that will fit with the harmony. Okay. Now, sometimes I do it with M over here. Sometimes I'll do I, I and M on the third string and the first string and just kind of brush across the second string. See? Okay. So that's the first chord. And then the next one is you can leave the first finger. If you can, if you can, I, I can do this. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. It, it, my first finger bends a little bit backwards. So when we go to the fifth of the chord in the bass, I do this. So I'm really only playing... Uh, the third and fourth there. Okay. And when I'm playing this chord in the piece, I'm almost touching the tip of this finger a little bit to the fifth string, and I'm trying over here with the thumb to make sure that I'm landing so that we don't get this fifth string ringing. See? Tom. And then, and I just move the second finger up, even though it looks like a change of chord. It's so temporary, it doesn't matter. Tom. Okay. Tom. And ten and young and lovely. That's actually right. Tom. girl. I'm already grabbing just a basic G7 bar chord, okay? And then my fifth is built into the shape. And I just slide the whole chord. Now, if I'm being a little nondescript about exactly what bass notes and exactly what chords I'm doing when, that's because I'm approaching this a little bit like improvising. So one night I might go bam, 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 bam. Other night I might go bam, 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 bam. Other night I might go shim, bam, 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 bam. I don't have a cast in stone classical music way that I phrase that melody. That's why I like the different uh, possibilities that I'm getting with my middle finger. And then if I play it faster, it's going to be different too. Shim, bam, 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 bam. So I'm re I, I always sort of, I'm thinking a little bit like a, a jazz guy, okay? Okay, so this backstrike is kind of built into the rhythm machine of how I play. So to, to sort of There's always a different way to phrase something. So what I'd like you to do, as far as the phrasing, is make the lyrics and a version of the song. It doesn't need to be the Getz and Gilberto version, but uh, 
make the lyrics your reference point. So it's tall and tan and young and lovely. The girl from Ipanema goes walking. And when she passes each one, that's the next lesson. When she passes. Tall and tan and young. So that's, uh, that's what I do, you know, and I, and I might throw a variation in. I wish it was more specific. I wish I could just give you the answer. Um, let me play it for you one time with the intro, okay? Just, just for fun, and then we'll go to the next video. Oh, one, two, ready, and... So, let's go on to the next video, bars five through eight of the A section. All right. Welcome back. Okay, so now we're on the A section of Girl from Ipanema, bars five through eight. So that's going to be when she passes each one that she passes goes ah that's what we're gonna do and this was something today as i was preparing this video lesson there's a couple different ways to play this and there are different things to consider so i'm going to show you what i do and i'll show you some alternates and i'll show you the pros and cons of each one Okay, so the, my first idea with this one was one that I want the sound of triplets also intermingling in this arrangement. So I phrase the melody with, with triplets, and that's, that's pretty tricky. You don't have to do that, but I'll show you what I do. And so version one, of this, which I tend to play, it's because I wanted all the cross strings to ring. So I play this up on the G string now. See how that's... That was sort of my first consideration. I wanted this lyrical ringing melody for this. Now, I mentioned triplets. Let me just sing the triplets to you. Shango bam bedango bam 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 yambo bam 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 triplet. Jam bam 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 yam ding 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 gong chick on keep bang Shang dong 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 dong. Get dong dagger trip ballet trip ballet. It's easy for that to become bling bing 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 Think about the rhythm that you want on there and be, be very specific with yourself on the phrasing. Okay, so doing this cross string. Let's, let's, um, let me show you what I do. And of course, what I do is the craziest alternative as usual. So here we go. First finger and then the third finger down here. Now that's the fifth of the chord. Bum, 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 bum. Um, and I'm only putting it 
on the first note of the triplet because to try to do the boom boom makes things very muddled and complicated and it's difficult so okay A little bit. what I'm playing there I'm just playing the bass at the 10th fret but I'm using first and third finger and before I'm plucking anything I'm kind of Unfortunately, I'm stopping the, the high E string. I wish I wouldn't. But it makes it feel more secure to land like that. You can also use a different finger if you want. Okay. Before we go ahead to the next chord, let me show you a different way to do that. I'm just playing... two notes, fifth and third fret, which is a lot safer and a lot clearer, okay? Melodies on the B string just ring better than melodies on the G string. And that could be a possible way that I'd switch to. The third way, which is a no-brainer, you don't get the switch in the bass, is... That's very nice. I'm just holding the chord. Now I play it with the thumb over the top of the neck, so that might be a no-go for you, because you need to be able to take a fourth finger on and off. But you don't get the, the bass moving. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead with this one here in the video, but you can, of course, experiment with what feels best for you there. That's really, all of them are not bad. Okay, so now the, the part that I alluded to before, you're gonna go up to the ninth fret, eighth fret, ninth fret. And now the middle note is just a safety note. So I like to do this, believe it or not, with the middle finger, landing the uh, ring finger here as security. So, one that she. Now, watch this. You got to do this like this because this is cool. Second finger, and then first finger is under it. They're both in the same fret. It's a little hard to see here on the left hand. Let me in. So, first finger is playing the G string. And then, because you're going to slide that and play an open B string. Okay, I kind of ran through that. Let me let me let me go nice and slow. Now you might be wondering why we've ended up there. One that she passes goes. By. You're going to hold that. You've got two of the same notes. Now watch, this is a little bit tricky. Pinky there. And if you can grab those as comp, like a comping chord. Now the reason I'm playing this chord down here and not here is because I want that second string to ring free and clear and not bump anything with my left hand, okay? And I sometimes I go, I'm just strumming these with my thumb, or I'll even get some fingers up in there. But I try to get right back into the boom, 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 since I'm not playing any melody stuff, okay? I know you, one would never think that one could get this intense about all the different ways to play a melody. Uh, well, but somebody's got to do it. And so that's my job. Uh, what I'm going to do now is play from the top of the verse what we did in the last video 
and this together so that you get to hear a full A section. Okay, so here we go. A one, a two, a ready, and. So I just played two A sections for you. Let's go on to the next video. All right. All right. This is going to be a real short lesson. I just want to illustrate something to you about why it's important to check out the lyrics of a song, if possible. I mean, I don't have these lyrics memorized, but sort of in my ear, I know that there's a different phrasing uh, on the second A section. So for example, the, the first one, tall and ten and young and lovely, blamped, bamped. okay, so let's sing that again. Shoot, baby, yo, ba, 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 okay. It differs a little bit on the second one, so when she walks, it's like a samba, so bam. Bam, bam. When she... And I need more backstrikes, so instead of tall and ten and young and lovely, tall and ten and young and lovely, okay? She walks So that's why it's good to mess with this right hand stuff where you can using backstrikes and using these upstrokes, plop the notes uh, right in the rhythm where you want. Okay, so that's, that's just a short, itty-bitty little lesson to further motivate you to get into the song, get into the original or quasi-original version of it, whatever, I don't know if that was the first version of it, I think it was, um, and do a mind meld with it. Really get it so you could sing it, and then get your fingers to match the words as best as you can. Okay, so that, that's just a quickie. Let's go on to the next lesson where we're going to start doing uh, the bridge. And I'm going to break the bridge down into a few lessons so that we can deal with it in bite-sized chunks. All right.